What's up, guys? It's Kyle and Ben from Madhead. We're here at the Musicians Getting Beer and Bars, but currently uh, we're in the studio, and uh, I'm just gonna have a quick chat with you, hanging with Miles and John. We just dropped our uh, latest single, Let It Out, in May. Uh, it's been doing quite well on radio. It's been in the uh, top 40 alt charts for seven weeks now. Oh yeah. We also dropped a, another single, Shade, back in March, kind of as a setup track for the year. And we've got a plethora of music coming out. We're just uh, finding our time. And uh, it's nice to see some shows coming back. We just played Neat Cafe last Shout Sunday. out to Neat. All the guys at Neat, great place. Yeah. Famous Mountain Head origin story. That bio's true. Yeah, that's, uh, we were touring with another band, didn't like what was going on, somehow or another ran into a Mayan shaman, and uh, he took us to a dog park to smoke DMT. And after that, he drew a line in the sand and said, from here on out, don't worry about the past and do what you're gonna do in the future. And basically, Ben and I looked at each other and said, let's figure this out. And so Mountainhead was born. The first single we dropped was We Stole Your Head, and that's where things really, you know, started to garner some heat. It's a pretty cool song, and, uh, you know, we got some Spotify playlisting, and some industry started sniffing around once that tune came out. And um, another big thing was our cover of Shimmy Shimmy Ya, when the Wu-Tang Clan shared that across, you know, their YouTube and Facebook, all their social media platforms. That really gave us uh, a good platform internationally and in the U.S. to just kind of garner more attention and, you know, find new fans and get our sound around. Everywhere. Neat Cafe, of course, Neat. we've already mentioned it. Neat Cafe is great. The Drake's been great. The Horseshoe's been great. Oh yeah. Bovine's always a good time. Yeah. Crowbar and Variety when it was around in Collingwood, RIP, but uh, yeah. you know, Steve Walker took it over and he's doing a great job with the Drunken Oysters, so it'll be cool to go and play there again. Yep. Anywhere in Collingwood has been fun. Bracebridge Hall has been great. Yeah. We like getting up north and in some of the smaller towns you can kind of boogie around a little better and you know kind of spin your name around a little easier because Toronto and the bigger cities they kind of need other people to tell you you're cool before they realize they're cool and indeed we are cool so um, it's been cool just to go to the outskirts and push things in. Other than playing a concert in a hot air balloon and recording in a submarine what else do you think we got? Well there's gonna be a lot of touring unless uh, you know the Zelda variable comes in with uh, COVID-19 but uh, you know, we had just signed with Ralph James and Mike Graham at APA, so they've been working pretty hard getting us uh, booked and getting some shows ready and some tours lined up. We also signed with Sound Talent Group in the States for World, which is Bex Majors and Randy. And, uh, you know, a lot of things in the works. We're just kind of waiting to see how the wind blows with the obvious pandemic that's been going on. Um, if not, we will tour in video games then, I guess. Yeah, we'll see you in your Super Nintendo and your Nintendo Switch alike. <laughs> We also, we are playing, uh, we're playing a couple shows in September. We're playing the Horseshoe, September 25th. Classic. The Biltmore uh, Theater, September 24th. So those are back-to-back -back shows, even though nice. I explain them in reverse. We're playing in Thornbury, September yep. 17th. And of course, we have the second edition of Mountainhead Live from the Boathouse, Lake Cash Wackamack, which is a charity show we put on last year. It's Boat In, um, and it was an amazing experience. So we're doing it again, and uh, maybe a little bigger and better this year. Look out on YouTube for the clips. It's a big place, the internet, eh? Yeah. Social, social media is definitely the, the best spot, and I'd say if you're going to follow us anywhere, Instagram would be where we're most active, just because ease of use is a little better. You know, Facebook's kind of kind of clunky these days. TikTok, we haven't quite figured out yet. And uh, Twitter's fun just to talk talk some bullshit every here, here and there. But yeah, definitely Instagram, at Mountainhead Music, any of the other uh, platforms, at Mountainhead. Obviously, go to our Spotify or our Apple Music, whatever streaming service you use. Follow us there, and all our music's there. And if I do say so myself, we haven't put out a bad track yet. Yeah, we got a good following in Collingwood. We played this outdoor show one time, and Ben and I thought it'd be a good idea to take some weed pills before, because we thought, ah, this won't be a big gig. We set up our stuff, look up, and there's about 250 people standing, staring at us. And we're looking and going, what are they staring at? It's like... Oh, we gotta make sound for them. Oh yeah, we're uh, they're here for us to Just do something. Just deer in headlights, terrified all of a sudden. And after that, it was like this was a brutal show, but we made the most fans from it, which is just ironic. Who yeah, knows that, how this goes? That show's still 
paying dividends <laughs> with fan base and, uh, you know, any town you're in and say, hey, we saw you on the streets of Collingwood. And you're like, really? Out of all the places we've played and the big crowds that have been around, that's the one that seemed to uh, really shine a light. So like we were saying about uh, Shimmy Shimmy, uh, the Wu-Tang shared it across all their platforms, but we didn't know that was going to happen. We just one hung over Sunday. We decided to record the song for shits and giggles. And then we went to uh, Miami. And as soon as we landed, the phones are blowing up with thousands of notifications. We're like, that's strange. So we were obviously partying in Miami. And then all of a sudden we get the DM message from the abbot of the Wu-Tang Clan, the, the RZA. And he wanted the video file to spread across the platforms. And we have to explain to somebody at home, two sheets to the wind, how to get the file from the computer to the RZA. It's kind of like uh, in Zoolander when uh, Hansel realizes the files are in the computer but you know sometimes we're not the most organized with our uh, our file naming and our file organization so it was kind of an interesting maze to walk through where the secret file was untitled 3042 and you only got one shot to get it to the wu-tang <laughs> right but we did shout and out to the wu-tang shout out to the wu-tang for that that was huge r.i.p dirty as well yeah why else i i haven't found anything else in life worthwhile pursuing other than music, hanging out with friends and family and uh, contemplating the interior realm. Um, and it's just way easier to express, you know, language is pretty limited. Um, Best you, form of communication I've found. Yeah, and you can definitely, you can have a lot of fun making music and it's an endless, infinite well of mystery, fun and frustration and joy. So it's kind of an all, it's kind of like life It'll to, occupy to the, you for eternity, yeah. you know? That's, what, that's a good thing to have. Life to the tune of 440 or 432 if you're uh, into those deep, disresonating frequency uh, theories. How did we begin here? Well, I started playing guitar at a pretty young age and uh, pretty quickly I became the party trick at our parents' parties. You know, I had to slam the solos to Crazy Train in front of, in front of the groups and just, just kind of excelled there and uh, always push through with music and life. I basically went to university for finance and figured out that I was in the wrong field. And I also started smoking weed and listening to Wu-Tang and listening to Bob Dylan, listening to Grateful Dead, listening to Allman Brothers. Van Morrison. Van Morrison and going, the well, there's, doors. there's something here. I had to open the door for the doors. And then all of a sudden the mind went, Whoo! Windows were wide open and the breeze was blowing. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we, we both studied Indian classical music for quite a while now. Yeah. I've uh, been with the same guru for eight years and that's been an interesting, humbling and uh, all around positive experience to get deeper into understanding music. And it's, it's kind of the opposite of the rock and roll life. You know, you sit down and you're a lot more disciplined with say we play sitar and tabla and singing. It's much more disciplined than going to a bar or to a gig or a venue and you know, you might have a couple beers, you might smoke some weed, you might get a little unruly, but in Indian classical music, it's very disciplined, you know, no intoxication, sitting down for hours and hours and just uh, basically paying respect to the universe or God or whatever you want to say um, through complete devotion in the craft. All right, guys, uh, thanks for having us. Uh, you can check us out anywhere online. And uh, once again, we're Mountain Head. And don't be scared to throw up the mountains wherever you are. Thanks for having us. This is Musicians in Bars getting beer, except we're in the studio, and we've yet to crack one, but we're going to very soon. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, guys. See ya.